Okay. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Yeah, in short, I have made a little game, a visual novel thing, for Jim Chi's video series, um, The Malinky Saga. So, well, first of all, I have written a short letter here in in the game, so we are going to take a look at this one first. Anonymous, finish your first ten games in life as soon as possible. I missed that obviously because they are go all going to be rubbish. <laughs> um, yeah, his yeah, YouTube channel, Billy Billy channel here, and. Yeah, this game, the thought of making this game has been existing for a long time and, well, I finally made it. Yeah, I don't know how to code and... But using this Game Maker Studio 2, uh, it allows me to make games without too much coding. It still needs some coding theories. I I've learned a little bit, just a little bit. So it can be more convenient than I thought. So first of all, this game only achieved 20% of my imagination, including the art which were downloaded, and and there are some complex functions which I wish haven't been achieved. Uh, yeah, like enemy AI and some other things. Uh, yeah, and the seven load system. It doesn't have any seven load system. <laughs> the built-in seven load system is not useful. I've tried, but no, haven't succeeded. Um, I have changed the plots for some bit, and here are spoilers in case you haven't watched the Malinky Saga about math. <laughs> there, were, there were actually five episodes of math, but I basically deleted four of them um, because I don't quite like him, though Jim himself does, yeah. And about the mystics and mad men part, this part, yeah, it is the actually the most suitable part for making the puzzle solving game, but again, coding. And Mr. Blake, he's another character from Jim's other video. And the serious grandson too. Uh, I'll mention this when we come to it. And the FBI interrogation. I want to use this to cue the theory at first, but um, I want to add different storytellers. So mm. here are the credits. Some music downloaded, uh, sound effects, and the sp uh, sprites which are basically images for your objects in this game, um, and font. I'm feeling myself making a rather emotional speech <laughs> in the background music like this. Uh, anyway, let's get started after five minutes talk. And I'm going to comment a lot in this video, so there will be a lot of spoilers. Anyway. So, we use Andy to move, and since there is a dialogue here, so he cannot move right now. And we press E to interact and escape key to leave the dialogue and start again. It's not skip, it's start again. So this one, this character, Demi, yeah, now I'm sure, I'm sure if you watched the uh, series, video series, you can recognize him. And 2011, England, and this time is my design. It, uh, Jim didn't mention the exact time in the original series. So 2011, England. I pace in the hostel room and stare into the darkness. It's been like this for years. Always like this. The windows of the cramped little hostel overlook the roof of the white hall. A star is in the middle of the sky. It's time to get going. Yeah, and now the character can move. Yeah, since the dialogue's stopped. 
my phone. There's a message from Mr. Blake. Dimmy, I hope you already arrived at your mission destination. Do the job and retrieve the cortex. And, uh, well, as you can see, there's a punctuation error here. She'll be the most important sacrifice on our way to the future. Mr. Blake told me a story that sounded unbelievable. A story about a person who can change the time and the space. At the end of the story, he told me to find the heroine of the story and retrieve her brain. I already know where she is. Let's go. So we leave the hostel. I know it's not like London. <laughs> anyway, we're going to the underground station and choose the destination. I don't know why. This institute is clean and tidy, but it reminds me of something. Reminds me of an incident from over 20 years ago. That incident is like a churned up mass of flesh and blood that grows in my mind. Coiled up, it pains me and lingers. Bloody and blurry. And cannot be forgotten. Why is it like this? This place is nothing like it was 20 years ago. But I've done the similar thing to erase all that are in my way. So here we have this um, building here. Um, we can enter it. Uh, I basically, well, painted these corpses. Uh, there are different objects, but only one sprite to show the appearances of them and we can go upstairs and upstairs and upstairs and now we cannot open this door and here is that character a man with a mask that with the words dr e written on it the blonde man is wearing a strange mask on his face his face could be seen through the slit in the mask pained and green so yeah, this is the character appeared in the Malingi Saga as well, Dr. E. Um, died because of the mask uh, with the demon. But we cannot find any key on him, so the keys... Uh, we can search, search, and the keys actually... Here we got the key, and... So... This is the next step. The black mask on Dr. E's face gives me a bit of headache. But all in all, I don't see a second person in my way. The sky outside is getting lighter. I head up the stairs. Just now, there seems to be some commotion upstairs too. But in a rare moment, I notice the light of dawn. A beautiful dawn. And... Okay. There is our heroine protagonist, patient one. I see the heroine of that story, just what I've been told. She has no name, no family, no relationships, just a patient one. An experiment for the experimenter to study, with red hair like a witch who would be judged in the Middle Ages. Actually, the red hair um, is my design too. About, uh, I'd say, yeah, two years ago, two years ago, I subscribed to Jim and first watched the Malinke Saga and made some fun arts for that too. There she stands, and she too is wounded, the blood on her forehead covering her eyes. The moment I notice her eyes, my head hurts a little, but she just stands there dumbfolded with her wounds. Who are you? Live with me and get out of here. I command thus. She makes no answer, her eyes starting back and forth between the blood on my body and my gun. Then looks at me in horror. In that moment, my head hurts as badly as if I'd been hit hard. But she also seems to have fallen to the ground from her injuries and fear. I decide not to take pity on her. I shouldn't do that. So, yeah, this, if you have 
watched the Malinki Saga, this should be the first episode of Demis. Not the first episode of the whole series, but the first episode of Demis. It's patient one. She's awake. I load the gun in front of her. I've had this gun for a long time, yeah, punctuation missing again. It's silver and white, and I like it a lot. Many parts have been replaced many times. It's kind of a scissors gun. It's also killed a lot of people. But I cannot do it. Patient one stops looking me in the eye. She shrinks tightly, her eyes closed and trembling. Fear spills out from all around her. She really reminds me of 20 years ago. I never believed in spirits or the afterlife or anything. But since I heard that story, to how I felt when I went to that facility, to how I miss the people from 20 years ago now, all made me more and more hesitant. I decided not to do it. I turned off the safety on the gun that was already on. Even I am relieved by this. I crouch down. Patient one opens her eyes as if she senses a slight easing of the atmosphere. I seem to see the scar on my face in her eyes. When she looks at me, I feel that weird headache, uh, <coughs> weird headache again. Maybe that's one of the reasons why Mr. Blake and indeed the whole organization wants her. This strange ability and the potential behind it. But I do have to change that decision. I have a heavy Eastern European accent. I hope she can understand. Well, now... Uh, Jim himself is an expert on accents, all kinds of accents of English, but I'm not, so I'm just going to read it as usual. <sighs> the first line of Demi's, of his first episode. The change of his fate. My name is Dimi, and today you will not die. You're lucky, you know. Very, very lucky. Her eyes flicks to the side, perhaps noticing my wedding ring. Instead, I'll cure you. With these words, I get closer to her and sit down on the floor as well. I had it ease a little. Is she able to use her fear to attack her opponent? Maybe, at least I think, she's not so afraid of me anymore. But only to a small extent. When I said I was going to cure her, I did mean it. I'm still a doctor in the organization, but only the quiet bolt would come to me. I take out my cigarettes and ask her if she wanted one. She shakes her head. She seems confused. Look at you, how much do you remember? She still shakes her head. I don't know what happened. It seems the, the fainting spell made her lose some of her memories. That's good, though. I have good news and bad news. The bad news is that my boss wants you dead. But the good news is that I've decided not to do it. I'm going to keep you alive, Malinki. Because, you see, I think that you deserve to live longer. Is that my name? She speaks for the first time. I feel myself actually smiling. No, it's Russian for little, or rather, little one. You don't even remember your name. No. It doesn't matter if you don't remember the name. Names can be changed to cover up your past. I said so. I do think so too. As for this gun? Don't worry, it's not for you. It's for those people who come for you. She looks cold, and I hand her the jacket I put aside. Yeah, I, I said put aside because the sprite uh, of Demis uh, hasn't got a jacket on him, so I just, I've just written put aside here. I'm doctor, well, how do you say it? Of a criminal syndicate. And you are in big trouble. Some people, powerful people, want to hurt you. But don't worry, I'll make sure you're safe. Obviously, now she only has to take my opinion. I continue talking as I tend to her injuries. 
Earlier, my boss gave me an order. He, well, is a good man. Not really good, but overall a good man. He told me to... Well, told you. And you have the ability. An ability that can make a big difference. But as I said, I've decided not to listen to him. I'll bring you to the right people. They're called Dynasty. Oh, how can I miss so many punctuations here? <laughs> I've used the uh, search and replace function and obviously there were some mistakes being made. <laughs> anyway. All you have to do is love them. Going to Dynasty will be a pain, but I have no other place for her to go. She nods immediately. And yes, she has no reason to disagree. Well, I have to go and tell a lie to my boss. I'll be back in two days, Tops. You stay here for these two days. Here's money for you. Go eat on the first floor when you're hungry. And wait for me to come back. This is for you too. I take the gun down and hand it to her. Uh, there shouldn't be a me here. She seems to like the gun, or rather cherishes it. She takes it and puts it in her back. See you later, Malinky. And we go out now to the underground station. Here we are, the uh, base of the criminal syndicate. This is Mr. Blake, another character of Jim's, yes. Uh, he's missed a little killer video, which I like. And I don't think he's put the answers of that Mr. Killer video because <laughs> it's a kind of interacting video. Um, but basically the answers are in the comments zone already. Mr. Blake. This is Mr. Blake, my superior. A young man and a doctor. Yes, that character's doctor too. He likes to collect different body parts. Of course, Malinky's brain is a part, but not really his daily hobby. It is something else. You're back. Did you bring the brain with you? I came up with my lie on the way back. It's a bit lame, but it'll do. It's a bit tricky. I need to come back for some instruments. He put up quite a fight, a good fight, and broke a few. I thought I told you to just kill her. She's stronger than we thought. And where is she now? Chopped up, no need to worry. Mr. Blake uh, looks a little upset, but doesn't question me. I'm rapidly depleting the trust we had built up over countless missions. In fact, I'm coming back to pick up my cash and cars and some papers. It's going to be a long journey to Dynasty. Just as I'm getting back to my place and packing my things, I receive a test, a text message on my phone. It is from another member. We have a good relationship, but the content of this message is not comforting. Do not reply to me. The target has a locator device in the hairline, which has the same signal as that establishment. So it has been tracked by Mr. Blake and is moving fast towards Queensbridge Station. I don't know what the hell you're up to, but anyway, get out of here. And the Queensbridge Station actually comes from the King's Cross. And yeah, as you can see, the uh, background picture is actually pixelized and using, using a software called Pixage, I think. Pixage Studio, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it is that name. So here we go, the bin. I didn't leave in that stolen car. I left from Queensbridge Station to get back to base. I don't know exactly how Malinky was informed of this, but I probably can guess it. But in any case, I should have found her immediately. I can't let what happened 20 years ago happen again. Never again. The crowds at the Queensbridge Station are endless, and I cannot find her in them. If she can really see everything, does she know I'm looking for her? I'm looking for you, Metachiana and Tanya. So these two names are actually the names I gave for Demi's family 
in the fan fiction I've written for him, like about two years ago. Maybe I'll just let her die, be taken, be set to be sacrificed. It's really none of my business whether she dies or not. But I can always remember that night all those years ago. That terrible empty night. Maybe he values the friendship from me too much. I got another message on my phone. Don't reply. The park at Queensbridge North. Drop the phone. Yeah, so this is the scene. <laughs> yeah, of the second episode of Timmy's. Uh, I know it's rather simple and shabby. It's uh, actually imitating the second episode's lighting, the blue light of the room. I made it this time. I found her at the park. Thank you. I don't know why. It's like I know where you are. So I went to look for you. I'm sorry. You don't need to be like that. I should be the one to apologize to you. Finally, it didn't happen. I swear on my life, I will protect yours like mine. I'll never leave you again. I'll always be here to protect you. She doesn't understand why I say that. I don't really want to explain it for now. I sigh and I take out a knife. Don't be afraid. I have to take out a thing in your hair. Tracking device. I take the fire and burn it off. It was such an oversight. I gave them a lie and it was immediately revealed by the moving signal. You still got my job hit? This is good. They took the gun, but I got it back for you. Here, keep it. And I owe you an explanation. I need to smoke. Do you want one? Fine. Malinky, how much do you remember? Anything from yesterday, today. I can't even remember what I ate for breakfast. You remember that I told you you had the power, that people were looking for you. I was looking for you too. The reason you were searched for and held by so many people is because of your special powers. Your ability to know where I am counts as one of them. I was going to come and track you down, kill you, take your cerebral cortex and take it back to them to study, to learn more about your abilities, more about your powers. But I couldn't do it. When I saw you, I couldn't kill you. Don't misunderstand me, Malinky. I've killed many people. It's my job. But I've also saved a lot of people. But that's my job too. I understand that you may not believe me. You may not trust me. But at least for now, I'm asking you to stay with me. I promise I'll protect you. For now, I will protect you. And when you're strong, and you can defend yourself again, Mashat Pit, you protect me, eh? I uh, I kept the uh, mushet bit, the Russian here, because oh, I love this mushet bit. I think it means perhaps and or maybe in Russian, and I'm sure my pronunciation is actually rusty, but I like it mushet bit, kesas, <laughs> maybe, perhaps. She nods solemnly. I actually smiles again. Well then, you rest. We'll move out tomorrow, when you're feeling better. we we'll go find my friends at Dynasty. As for the rest, I'll tell you later, slowly. For now, get some rest. Moi malinki. And moi malinki. This is another Russian part of the original lines. Uh, I think it means my little one. Hence the title of this visual novel. <laughs> yeah, and this is the... Uh, music, uh, the song Jim has used in his original third episode of Dimmies at the uh, beginning and the ending of it. Dimitri, Dimitri, come here and have a look at, at Tanya's painting. It is lovely. There's been a saying go around. Ah, uh, yes, this is the lyric, and I begin to think it's true. Once I had a loving girl, the sweetest, the sweetest little thing in town, but now she's gone and left me.
Now I ain't got nobody, and nobody cares about me. I walk up to the sound of the music. The picture in my trouser pocket is showing a corner.、Uh, it should be. It is. It is a photograph I have with me. <coughs> <coughs> I pick it up and kiss it. When I look up, Malinki is sitting there. Beside her is my jacket, and she is looking at me and smiling. I turn off the radio music. She looks at my pocket with some curiosity. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you're awake. How are you feeling today? Are you better? Much better. You're still healing, but I'm glad that you're almost well. She's in a better mood and seems to trust me more. She smiles and asks me. So, are you going to tell me more about your、uh, plofta? I don't know where she learned the word. The word may be on a billboard at Queensbridge Station. Plofta, the truth. Yes, I replies. I reply with the same smile. Then I explains the theory I heard from Mr. Blake specifically. I've heard from my superiors and some secret agencies that you have the ability. How did I search and replace these things? Why are the why are the S's are always a little punctuation like this? You're what they call an internal soul. Not only can you see everything in the past and present, but you can also travel. That's right, time travel. That can't be true. Plofta, it's true. It sounds like an Asimov's novel, but it's true. They use their powers to play their personal game, to hurt people, to falsify history. And Malinki, I believe that it is not only a path that you should not follow, but it is a path that you would not want to follow. I look at your surprised face and go on to explain. You may see forever, before you were born, maybe after you die. Time is up, time is down, time is a cone, time is a cylinder. When time that falls on itself, it becomes so small, so malinky, that you can eat it. Malinky is amused. She giggles, but my heart grows serious. Malinky. The path they're going to force you to take is wrong. Everyone wants your power, but you can never give that power away. But now, your power's untapped. Who knows? Maybe after a few time travels, you find the pieces of your lost power meeting mystics and madmen in history. Malinki digests these things I told her, and those are indeed the reasons why I want to save her too. But in the end, it is because she reminds me of twenty years ago. But I still didn't tell her my story. I'll see. I look at her, and suddenly something come over me. You're no good from bad. For good will let you go. The bad will want you to stay. Don't let those people win, Malinki. For you are the smallest thing in the world. But the smallest thing is also the most precious. For even a small thing lost weighs heavy on the heart. She seems to be thinking about her powerful abilities. Can I take you with me? I smile and shake my head. I won't be there to help. I will be here waiting for your return. Malinki smiles back. Her stomach rumbles. I decide to go out and get some burgers, and then take her to leave. Yeah, so. Here we go. Another character.、Uh, if if you have watched the Malinki Saga, you should have you you should know what will happen next. Yeah, to pull the trigger. I have deleted so many things in making this game a visual novel, but I still wanna add the parts when the player has to、um, pull the trigger themselves. Oh, it's kind of my bad hobby or interest. <laughs> anyway, let's do it. So it is the short part of Matt's background story. There should be a bartender, but I changed it into old man for convenience. 
Hi, Matt. I can't believe it. You lost the job at the mine. How come it's closed? Have you been to a few more places? Yeah, they're awful. I met an ordinary miner in Wales, supporting my wife and child, but in a difficult position because the mine was closed. Everyday life is about looking for a job and occasionally coming to drink to drown my sorrows. Alas, the only thing that is certain in these days is uncertainty. I saw Caroline the other day, and she was fretful too. Life. Good luck to you. We may have to move, Poppet. The mines are full around here. I love you. That hasn't changed, okay? Really. Uh, I'll go out tomorrow and borrow some more money. Ask some friends. I'll give everything I have for this family. Caroline didn't blame me. That makes me even more upset. I bow my head in silence, then go on talking. I'm going in, Poppet. Good night. I know it's a bit scary. Mom and Dad aren't fighting. We were just worried. Dad's doing his best to earn money, so we don't have、uh, no place to live. I promise everything will be fine. I will. Everything's going to be okay. I promise. I love you. And here it is. Matt's origin. I hear a strange voice. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Can you hear me, Matthew? My name is Esther Roth. I come to see you to solve your problem. You have to do nothing but swear allegiance to me. I will ensure that your wife and children are taken care of forever.、Uh, this should be wife and child here, since there is only one child. You never have to worry about work or money. Their health, their well-being, they will always live in happiness. The exchange is simple, Matthew. You serve me forever, never die, but never really live. Your life and the lives of your family will be forfeited. They will not recognize you when they look at you. Accordingly, you will not recognize them either. It will be as if you had never existed. But it's in exchange for their happiness, Matthew. You only get one chance. Think about it. You'll be my servant, a faceless, tireless man who will make a pact for me for all eternity. But I'm fair. You gain power. Let the fun begin. Yes, I will. So this is Matt's origin.、Um, Matt, Matt has just killed、um, Demi, and it was actually not himself killing people. So this is his origin. He got attached by a demon, Astaroth. Here we are.、Um, as you know, I've deleted four episodes of Matt and added only his background story. And here we are at the Quantico FBI prison. Oh, here comes the longest dialogue or conversation here in this、uh, visual novel. <laughs>、uh, I, I have to put,、uh, I had to put a,、uh, what do I say, a dummy button to skip all of the conversation when I was testing the game. So of course now I've deleted it. I've been here for days now. Everything that happened before seemed so quick, like a dream, a dream with a mix of good and bad. There is no way I could quietly think about what has happened in these days. It all began the moment I opened my eyes, blinded by blood. After that, it was chaos. Malinki. There's no surname. No one knows my surname. Even this name is a nickname of Russian origin. The interrogation room is a bit hot and worse, stuffy. It's hot today. It's really getting warm. My smoke? Not that you have a choice. I haven't sm smelt. I haven't smelt smoke for a long time. Matt didn't smoke. I would offer you one, but you're not allowed. Bureau policy. Hello, Malinky. I'm Special Agent Philip Graves. Welcome to Quantico. <laughs> Philip Graves. I don't know if Philip Graves、uh, is a kind of joke、uh, in English. 
because、uh, Flip Graves actually exist in the latest game of、um, Call of Duty, yeah. And I read in the comment section、uh, saying that Flip Graves is actually not auspicious since it can be Phil Graves too. <laughs> anyway, it took us a long time to find you. I finally found you though. You're safe now. According to our records, you you were in the care of a British research facility. Afterwards, the doctor who was looking after you was killed by a mask with demon, which I found interesting. And you were present at the scene. I don't remember that. That's the truth. I don't remember everything before I woke up on the floor that day. Graves smiles mysteriously. In that case, I must compliment our intelligence services. At least this memory of yours at Mopa, I recorded for you. Mopa, mystery of psychic abilities, An organization secretly set up by the British to fight the East, specifically designed to help people like you. It's only natural that you should come under the jurisdiction of this organization. I don't remember. Griff takes out a pen and paper to begin、uh, and begins asking questions. What's your name? I don't remember. How old are you? I don't remember. Do you know a man called Matt? Yes. Do you know a man called Dimitri Klet, or Demi, or something? <laughs> so, so Demi's surname. Um, Jim's original design was、um, Kletwischlis. It's German. I'm not sure if it was a kind of humor or joke. It actually means.、Um, So the Maliki Saga was produced、um, before, quite early,、uh, when Jim was still directly communicating with his subscribers and patrons. I'm not sure if it's election by all of the subscribers or patrons or something, just his own design. I don't know. <laughs> But、uh, anyway, I changed it. I hope it's fine anyway. <laughs> yes. Have you ever manifested supernatural powers? I don't know. Do you know who your doctor is? No. Griff's eyes blink more and more frequently. Sorry, I've got a bit of headache. Is it my power? His mouth twists a few times. Then he looks at me coldly. Have you seen me before? I think so. Do you remember before you were alive? Griff stares at me deadpan, while the hand recording the answer keeps writing. I feel the horror in Graves more and more, but can only answer no. Do you remember what happened before you died? Sorry, after you died. No. He holds up the case file with a strange occult symbol drawn on the cover. I'm dumbfounded. Who the hell is Graves? What does he want? I know who you really are. This madman. He's got Russian blood or British, and generation after generation of his family are killers. You're the only one he doesn't kill. What does this Dmitri mean to you? He didn't kill you. And Matt, do you think he's special to you too? He took you with him all around his killing spree journey. These killers, murderers, criminals, everyone, everyone. They just don't hurt you. He mutters this and then takes out something. You recognize this? I do, and I'm sure you recognize it too. Yes, belong to your friend Matt. It'd be a bit heartless if you didn't recognize him as a friend. You're the only person he doesn't kill. His tiny pistol killed a lot of people, huh? Graves looks at the little pistol and points his cigarette, clutching finger at me. You witnessed quite a few of them too, didn't you? According to our records, you witnessed mass regeneration several times. But that can't be true, can it? It's all you lying to me. A person doesn't just get shot in the head and then get up and walk away, right? Imagine the headache. You'd have to go straight to the pharmacy drugstore and pick some painkillers, huh? I'm not lying. Ever since Matt killed Demi. I've had no choice but to be taken to all sorts of places with him. He seemed keen to go on a killing spree, and every time he was found by the police, he would go up to them at gunpoint and regenerate in full view. 
laughing and sending the people in front of him to heaven or hell again. Then he would take me on to the next journey. This graves, with the exception, Matt didn't come back from his bullet. I'm actually amused by this poor and terrible painkiller joke, while Graves stops joking. I see no more bullshit. Matt might be a mystery to you, and to be honest, I don't care. He's dead. And he obviously has a soft spot, and that's you. So far from it. He's such an amazing character. Moving on to the next item. You recognize this? This gun was found on you. Graves' tone is cheerful. Did you use it? This time the tone returns to a cold, threatening tone. No. Graves raises an eyebrow. You know, it's surprisingly easy to work out if a firearm has been discharged or not. Gunpowder residue? No, no, not that. There's usually a dead body somewhere. Anyway, onto the main item I think you'll like, and will maybe help you to see clearly. He pulls out an object, Demi's glasses. Now, unlike Matt, we exchanged information with the CIA, so we have a wealth of information about Dimitri. Do you want to hear it? I'm not surprised the glasses are here. This is the FBI after all. So, this is Mr. Klett, after rescuing you from Mopa, took you into hiding for a few days, am I right? Yes. Then you were kidnapped again, and the suspect was Matt. He was the one who killed Mr. Klett in front of you, right? Graves gives a strange smile. Yes, I'm more or less reluctant to talk about this subject. But we have a large amount of information about Dimitri Clare's past. Your friend, Mr. Klett, that's a false name. He was born in Russia, Tivir to be precise. He was living there when he was, say, hmm, little gangster, a baby Russian. Then his family moved to East Germany and changed the surname because of their ethnicity and religion reasons. None of that matters anymore. Anyway, your dear Mr. Klett, in those days, was a good person. Anyway, he worked as a veterinarian. Veti. Veteri. Vet! He helped people, that's what he did. He had a small family too, a wife and a daughter. I immediately know another reason why Demi decided to save me. Graves keeps talking about Demi's past, it seems that he really wants my trust. Now around the late 80s, there was a surge in not just cult activity, but satanic activity too. People seem to be very interested in this world for some reason. And loads of little crazy groups started popping up. Sarah so Mandy May had nothing to do with this stuff until a relatively unknown cult kidnapped his wife and daughter and sacrificed them to a planet or whatever they believed. And Mr. Klett, he went ballistic. He reached a boiling point. You know those days, politics, huh? So the Interpol, the CIA, and the KGB or whatever, they didn't want any cults to pop up and cause any PR problems either. This was an opportunity. So your Dimitri took this. Graves takes the silver pistol and shakes it again. And, sac and massacred the cult. Dimitri burst into this cult building, guns blazing, and killed 32 people. Can you imagine taking the lives of 32 people? What kind of man can do this? What kind of human can do this? He killed them, but it was awful not. His family had been butchered, his little girl burned alive, his wife cut up into chunks. This broke the guy, obviously, and he went rogue. He decided that without meaning in his life, without purpose, he would simply become a tool for cruelty. Hence this go-to guy for all kinds of crime. Until recent incidents. He's still a good person to me, Agent. Graves is a little bit disappointed. Okay. Not my position to say. He hesitates and continues to try to gain my trust and persuade me. Passion drives all sorts of crazy crimes, and so does change. Change is the only inevitable thing in life, whether you want it or not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Change is the only noble thing. If you stand against change, you're standing in the way of progress. So why am I missing an A here too? If you stand in the way of progress, what does that make you? Just when I thought Graves is about to deliver more life sentiments, he says something that shocked me even more. 
All right, no more bullshit. You know what all this is about today? It's all about you. I want you to cooperate, but to keep behaving a no. You see, I'm an agent of Astaroth. This is all arranged for you. Look how special you are. Um, so Graves' episodes um, were actually three as well, like Dimmy's, but I have merged them into one piece here. Um, since they are all happening in the interrogation room. I killed Matt, yes. But why doesn't he come back to life anymore? Because it was part of him that killed him. That's right, my boss. Astaroth was on him and on me. The boss wasn't too happy with him and even thought he was starting to get stupid. So did he. And he had to go. I hope you will cooperate with me. Otherwise, maybe you will go in the same way. When I heard that, my mind panicked. It is a fear of death, after all. As a result, Grief suddenly stops, his eyes widen, and roll a few times with a look of great pain. Look, you don't have to do this, you know. We don't have to be enemies. We can do something together. Is this my ability to defend myself? I think about Demi and Matt's headache, and remember again what Demi, said, uh, what Demi had said about time travel, and what he'd just said about Astaroth. Wasn't there a guy called Astaroth in Matt's past memories which flashed in front of me? Grace shudders in pain. The desire to discover my destiny and the instinct to save myself increases. What do you want me to do? What am I? Graves cannot answer me. He's a bit out of breath. He looks like he's suffocating. At last, it stops. I look at him unconfidently. But his eyes go up in a pitiful and pure way. Thank you. Thank you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have to believe me, it really wasn't me. It is as if he is a different person. At this point, he's also looking around at like a little kid who had broken the mask, looking at his hands and feet, forgetting to even wipe the blood from his mouth. What have I done? I've killed people. My hands are covered in blood. Really, it wasn't me. Thank you. Thank you for freeing me. That was monster. Goddamn monster. God he really wants you. He's afraid of you. He's afraid of you kill him. Wait, who am I? Graves does his best to explain what he knows. A person who scares even demons. Look, haven't you already saved me too? He has already killed Matt, his henchman, through me. He was going to control you through me, to give up your powers to him so that he could strengthen himself. But I'm afraid he didn't expect your powers to be so powerful. You have to go and kill this monster. I think it, it should be like this. Astaroth is the demon, the one that caused everything. No matter how small you think you are, Malinki, you're stronger than him, much more powerful. He seems to be letting me letting me control you to time travel to meet those t people in history. Time travel according to Dimi. Then from them take the power you have scattered through time. He thought he was stronger than you and could make you willingly surrender these things that were yours, but apparently he was wrong. The cursed devil. My family was sick, so he, so he tempted me using the cure as bait. Same with Matt. Suddenly I'm a little more distrustful of Graves. Can this be him acting? But the situation now is like facing Dimi then. I have no choice. Besides, after all this, I've come to believe in this theory about time travel and demons and the fact that I've made demons afraid. And my identity and destiny, which the demons feared, from Dimi to Matt to Graves. Some died, some lived to suffer. I have to go and get back towards his mind. Though this time, I don't have the little maniac with me, who will take me on a journey. And there's no more doctor who promised me to wait for me to return. But if, if their fate and mine is as Graves says it is, then I'd have to choose to face Astaroth, the demon mentioned by both Mass Memory and Graves. To do that, I'd have to start my journey. Uh, so, there is a 
sub theory called Mystics and Mad Men in between these three episodes, but I, <coughs> since I merged these three episodes plots, um, I have arranged the, the Mystics and Mad Men part later. Next step. So this is the um, background story told by Graves of Dimis. I added it. Yeah, actually, I have made another visual novel using another easier engine, but mm, that one is not great. <laughs> I have painted those sprites myself for that one. I like this one, I've downloaded all of those. So this is Malinky. Uh, I designed Malinky to uh, take a look at Dimi's past. Alexei. I can still remember the scene when you got into university. My god, you know, not even one out of ten. Now you graduated and got a job. Isn't that right? The esteemed Dr. Klett. Aren't you satisfied with your job as a worker? Of course I'm fine, it's just that time flies. How much do you remember about Tivir? More or less, after all, I spent my childhood there. But it's been so many years. I can't even remember what I had for breakfast today. My good doctor, how can your memory be so bad? If it's as bad as you say, then you should be then you shouldn't be a vet. How many poor animals would be poisoned? I'm sure you can't recite all of the rules and regulations in the factory now. By the way, Dmitri, Nikita and I have recently joined a secret club, and Nikita is Alexei's wife. Would you like to go and see it? Sounds scary, what's that place? It's full of people like us. Russian people who moved to East Germany. There we can relax and speak Russian, use our real names, and we all trust each other and can help each other with anything. It's very difficult now and there's a place like this to go. I thought it would be good and want to recommend it to you. I think you would like it like it there. Then I'm going to go and see it. I knew it! <laughs> How has your wife been, by the way? Tatiana? She's fine. She's about to give birth. What a happy family you have. You met early and the family is doing so well. If you keep talking, I'll tell Nikita Zaharovna. Go on, tell her. She works with you every day at the clinic and I'm worried that you'll run her off. Dmitri, welcome to the dynasty. Yes. So the original series didn't mention dynasty. Um, after the first episode of Dimi's, when Dimi said uh, he's going to deliver us to Dynasty, and this organization or club or something just disappeared later. I'm not sure if I have mistaken, but <laughs> at least I didn't. I didn't find out. So I've uh, designed it as a secret club Dimi was in like 20 years ago and it was founded by his friends. Dimitri, welcome to the dynasty. Alyosha, you're finally here. I thought you had run into something on the way, but now I see you've gone to pick someone up. Dmitry Petlovich. Feels so good to call you that. Uh, yes, and those Russian names are made up by myself. They're not in the original series either. I think the full name I've given Dimi was um, Dmitry Petrovich Arenberg or Allenberg something. I found them online. <laughs> Good evening, Nikita Zahalovna. Indeed, Mrs. Molozov. I hope this is the correct etiquette to speak Russian names because I know there are rules and regulations to use names between different people uh, according to your relationship of them. Do you like that song in the radio? It's a Bulgarian singer singing a song. She misses home. Maybe it would suit us better to replace Sin with Rhine in the lyrics. Uh, actually, this song is called um, Marisa River or something. Oh no, don't talk about those sad things. Let's have some wine. Less wine and less cigarettes. Did you see that, Dmitry Petrovich? He's like that at home. I really envy your wife. Yes, yes, Dmitry is good at everything, but why do you fancy me? Alyosha! By the way, Dmitry, our neighbor's kitten looks a bit sick lately. Can I bring her to you? 
Nikita Taharovna mentioned this. No problem. Great. So this is the Miss Home. <sighs> it, it it looks so funny when those two sprites just go synchronized. Hi. This is the toy Alyosha said you asked him to help you buy. What? Tatiana and Tanya are not home? Do you need my help? You don't know where they often go. Watch the house phone for me, please. Dmitri! Dmitri Petrovich! I got a phone call not long ago, but I couldn't reach you. So I had to wait for you to come back. It was from the Mate PD. Um, since they are in the East Germany, I googled that um, there was a Mate district in Berlin. I think it means the Central District. They, I can't tell you exactly, but anyway, they found something. Like an identity document or something. So go and have a look. Dimitri. What happened, comrade? Anyway, it's a cult group that kidnapped people and took them to be sacrificed. Poor mother and child. A dynasty again. Alexei, I need to ask you to buy something. I don't know anyone else who has access to it except you. You don't want to buy that, do you? Dimitri, what are you risking? I know you want revenge, but it's a police matter. It's too dangerous. Can you do it or not? Okay, Dimitri. You go home and wait for me for a few days. Here's the gun and three boxes of bullets. Dimitri, I know that our consolation won't help, but what I'm trying to say is, since you've decided to do this, go ahead and do it. Some of your friends at Dynasty have also seen it and they have expressed their support for you. It's a complicated time and the authorities don't want to public these kind of things, so maybe this is an opportunity for you. Anyway, whatever you decide, Nikita and I will always be here for you, okay? If anything happens to you in the future, friends from Dynasty are here. Remember to come back to us. Alyosha, don't be ashamed of yourself. Dimitri will be fine. Goodbye, Dimitri. Dimitri has disappeared. He went to the cult base and killed 32 members. Even if there were 320 of them, he could kill them all too. He wanted them to make amends for their love. For his love. His life had no meaning anymore. So why not be a cruel instrument, a servant without feelings? There's a postcard signed with a simple D in Alexei's hand. And Nikita's reading Shakespeare Richard II. My eyes are full of tears and I cannot see. So, from here... It'll be the original Mystics and Mad Men part on the sub-series of the Malinki Saga. It's a Malinki traveling through time and space to, what do I say, get, his, uh, get her power back. This is uh, where I, what I mentioned, that part, which is the most suitable one for making a puzzle-solving game. But eh, here we go, my simple, simpler, simplest version. The Mysterious Call. I hear a mysterious call, can't see what time or space, but I decide to take a look. Yeah, time, not him, time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it is a mysterious man's voice. He calls himself Anton Levey, the Black Pope. Yes, tis I, Anton Levey, the embodiment of sin. I suppose you are the one I've heard for a long time. Travelling through time and space, Malinky, you are in the middle of a war. Travelling through crowds and between graves. The seas of those chaos and hatred that were planted centuries ago. You have left so many traces in the historical record, but almost everyone can't understand. But I can. I have adapted them into the satanic bible. Imagine, if you are not yourself, imagine you are a son of the stars, a daughter of chaos. Imagine that you could possess anything, anyone. Travel through any time and space. If you could kill with your mind, who would you be? 
you would be the most powerful person in the world. You would think you are God, and that you could get everything you wanted under your own desires. The decisions you make cannot change the past. You can only change the future. But if you are willing to make the choice between life and death, you may be able to create an opposite outcome. After all, you are the most powerful. I began to slowly lose my understanding. What does it mean to make a choice between life and death? What does it mean by an opposite outcome? Does it mean that I can still change the past after all, just by making the choice between life and death? Your choice is not so simple. You will face Astaroth. Don't forget what you are capable of. If you make the right choice, then your power, or this demon's power, might just save the people you love. This ability won't bring them back to reality, but it will put their past back on track. So you see, this is already very rare. Remember that FBI was right. You are more powerful than Astaroth. Malinky, little one, it is time to embark on your journey. With those words, Anton Levy's voice disappeared in the darkness. Yeah, so this is my design. <laughs> what I say, design for the Mystics and Madmen. Actually, the Mystics and Madmen contains only uh, six episodes. Uh, six, yes. Seven, if you plus Anton Levy, but Anton Levy's episode is not actually in that subseries. Uh, but uh, I have added two new characters here, just my own interest. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Anyway. First, take a look at the druid. Uh, actually, there is a kind of coincidence uh, when I, I'm recording this. Uh, Jim's latest video released yesterday. On Saturday, uh, it's featuring a druid too. And uh, the description of it uh, says we were lost in time and space. And I commented him saying, um, "Is this the Mystics and Madmen a limited version, a version, a uh, second version? We have this druid here. Well, Linky sees a druid. He's thin and young, and seems to be wise. He seems to." Be happy to see Malinky. Hi, traveler. Yeah, as I said, uh, the the latest video of Jim's features a druid. Every time he makes makes a Welsh character, I can more or less learn new Welsh words. This time, it's this one, traveler, um, and it is I think. Tyswell. Tyswell. Traveler. <laughs> Hi, Tyswell. <laughs> Where are you from? Well, Linky doesn't quite know how to answer him. From a distance. Then you must have seen a lot. I guess I have. Did you see a lot of kinds of flowers then? I think so. Do you bring any with you? I need some flowers that we don't have here in Wales. Malinky feels that this druid needs some help to help her. The druid also gives Malinky a little skull, a penlock bag, <laughs> according to Jim. Uh, it means a little skull. It looks cute. Uh, yes, so you can see from the top right as well, it is the 7th century in Wales. And here we have the little skull, the penlock bag. Uh, we can we can take uh, any journey first as we wish, but we'll just take that uh, one by one. So the seer in Jovik, York. I think I have made a mistake again because Jovik I think starts with a J in uh, in the first letter. But it's York today. Um, York conquered by the Vikings is called Jovik. Here we go with the Viking seer. Malinky sees a seer. The seer sees Malinky and greets her warmly. He comes close to look at her. Are you sure we haven't met before? 
when Inky shakes her head. I don't know. It is a very strange way to start a conversation, but the seer accepts it happily. He looks friendly and vaguely insane. Have you seen much fighting? Maybe so. You're hiding, young lady. You're running from the old life. Admit it, or you'll be stuck here. You've got to keep going. As Malinky is listening, she notices a little child beside the seer, who looks like his grandson. He's still little, very lively, with blonde hair and blue eyes, but he does not seem to talk much. Several blurred images suddenly flash before Malinky's eyes: snowy night, campfire, battle axe, blood, cabin, meat, hailstorm, crisis, and the loss of an eye. She shivers and turns to the seer. Who is this child? What did I see? Instinctively, she thinks that the seer will understand her. The seer does not question. This is my youngest grandson. Our family may move back to Denmark, but he is destined to stay in England and fight for the family's glory. As for what you saw, that might be his fate given by gods. You have a choice to make. To die or to live is your decision. It is both the end and the beginning. You can bring new life, or you can bring death. This one's for you. Valenki has no idea what these words mean, but the seer looks mystified and certain. She looks at the child. She knows that the Vikings often have another name. She feels that this child will need a suitable one. Okay, if you have watched. Uh, another series, three episode series of James called the Little Crow Saga. You know、uh, who this grandson, this little child is. Yeah, it is the、uh, Viking, John the Black Eye. Um, of course, he didn't appear in in the Mystics and Bad- Mad Men. Um, but the other day I was thinking about it. Uh, in the original series. Of、uh, the mystics and mad men, the alchemist later will see him. The alchemist mentioned this seer,、uh, saying that he's connected with some certain Viking king, whom I searched, lives in around the beginning or the earlier part of the 11th century, while John the Black Eye was 25 years old when it was 1065. So I think it's quite reasonable. <laughs> anyway, we'll move to the next step, to the alchemist. I just said. Malinki sees an alchemist. He seems to have been expecting her. I've been waiting for you for a long time, time traveler. You carry secrets that can help the queen and the country, traveler. I wish to make a deal with you to help our queen win the current war. It's simple. I'll teach you the secret of the Philosopher's Stone. You teach me the secrets of eternity and time and space. War. Because of a controversial execution, plus the Queen is also under attack for her belief. I need to help her. Yes, it is the, the Queen Elizabeth the first, and it's the execution of the、uh, Queen Mary and the war against the Spanish Armada. I know you probably won't say yes right away. So I'll show you. First of all, the Philosopher's Stone is not a stone at all. It is an animistic substance, a magical chronicle, a liquid, a gas, a solid. I'm not even sure if I should use A. <laughs> it can do everything. I, using modern means, can make the best use of it. But Malinki knows she won't give her powers away, so the alchemist is wasting his time. Malinky breathes as if seeing a mysterious symbol and knowledge in his mind. I'm curious if this skill of yours will be taught to the court fool. The alchemist frowns and ignores her. The philosopher's stone can convert everything but time. That's my bargaining chip. How about it, traveler? Our powers combined can rule all. The alchemist speaks and gives Malinky a small portrait of his queen. However, she is happy to help the alchemist a little, so that he can do more with helping his queen. A little alchemical material might be useful.、Uh, so I didn't design delicate system to 
lets you click on it and trigger the next conversation. So what it needs is actually the little skull, the pilon box. So if you have this, you will just trigger the conversation. So if you go through these these eight buttons twice, it will definitely complete the procedure. This isn't what I exactly wanted, but <laughs> ah, at least for now, this is what I can do. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we'll just complete the conversation first. Thank you, but when are you going to start working with me? Malinky smiles and shakes her head. The alchemist's face turns sour at once. You don't agree. That's your choice. Disagree? I see no reason for you to disagree. Help our sovereign and gain the power at the same time. It is time Malinky feels to leave. The alchemist's face is chilling and he holds his hands out towards her as if he wanted to use her as an alchemical material. Oh, sorry about the burping. <laughs> you will wander in the space between life and death, listening to the echoes of your own weeping and lonely interplay. Yeah, so the alchemist conversation has finished. And the Pellonbach has turned into a word. A piece of word escape. So the next one, the witch. Uh, so the original, the original series uh, contains a wizard, and I changed it. But Linky sees a witch. Hello, traveler. You seem to have a lot of questions. Indeed. Pity that I can't explain it to you. I seem to have lost something. There are strange creatures hovering before us, devouring things. They're after you, and they're after me. You'll be summoned by others. They lure you with eternity, with wealth, but you must not take the bait. You seem to have seen a lot of people, which is good, but you'll have to prepare yourself for the future. You must use your power well, my friend. Malinky listens carefully. You've done well to sit here and listen to a strange woman. It might be a good idea to find a large tree as a proper shelter, but perhaps perhaps you would like to use the power yourself. Well, the power is a burden to you that won't change. Live in the moment, remember the purpose and forget where you came from. Always watch your back. After these words, she pauses and sighs. Great as the conqueror will turn to dust, a cock in a keg of beer, or something to keep out the wind and rain. Anything will be forgotten. You and I are the same. So are our ideals. Mal has collapsed. I hope yours are still there and still worth remembering. And my light has turned into a pair of black eyes that keep me from seeing. The witch is deeply in the days of a crumbling faith. Okay, this is the poem, um, poetry to the runestone. So she just said the black eye, which is actually the other name for uh, for the uh, Viking, the little Viking, John. Yes, it's, uh, it has come from the other series of Jim, but I've used it here. So we go back and see this here again. Black Eye. That's a good one. It can be a good name for the boy. Malinky smiles faintly. It is time for her to go to the next place, too. She stands up and says goodbye. And the poem turns to this word. Much a bit, maybe. And... Yeah, let's just go to the Duke first. Malinky sees a duke. Behind him is a magnificently decorated bottle of ink. Malinky takes it. The duke sees her but doesn't care. You're a remarkable person. You've been traveling through time and space. I saw them try to lure you with some kind of eternity. Or even try to harvest your powers for their own use, right? As for me, I kill to kill and will continue to do so. Then I disappear. 
but you still have my memory. It's all your choice. What choice will you make? My choice will be to preserve the monarchy at all costs, just like our emperor does. Amulets or pagan things, I don't care. So the, in the original series, the duke、uh, has a name called Saint Germain. I think it's another historical character linked with mystics.、Uh, I changed, <laughs> I changed it、um, to a fictional duke of Austria. And the saving the monarchy came from the musical of、uh, Elizabeth. So here we go to the next step. To meet the king. <laughs> yeah,、uh, Tarum. This is、uh, this is another personal thing I've put in this fan-made visual novel. Anyway, we meet the king. Malinke sees a king. In the distance is a cathedral under construction. The king looks spirited, and he maintains the majesty of a monarch in front of her. The river gurgles on one side. Hello, traveler. Have you also come to see this building that will soon become a legend? When the、uh, when the Vikings first invaded the Lindisfarne, the sculptures and the wealth became a burden instead. The holy place of Saint Cuthbert was trampled by pagans. Now, at last, we can guard the cross in this land. It is possible that the bones of Saint Cuthbert will be buried here too. Isn't that exciting? Malinke thinks it over. Lindisfarne too should be near Northumbria as Durham. The descendant of the conqueror king is ambitious at the moment, and workmen are adding bricks to the cathedral. Malinke asked to take away a piece of cathedral's bricks, and the king readily agreed. Traveler, have you ever been to Eastern Rome? It is difficult to see the merchants of East Rome here, and I'm sure they will have exotic goods to show off the greatness of our dynasty. And the empress and the writer are, well, my personal settings here. The two characters I added. The Empress. Malinke sees an empress. She stands on high with a glowing look, as if defying everything. Are you a traveler from afar? My dynasty welcomes all travelers from foreign lands. Perhaps you would like the West Market, where merchants of goods from all countries are gathered, and of course, home and exotic treasures like this scroll of silk. You will always find a home in my empire. After all, you can only become an ocean by taking all the rivers. So it's different gender. I'm becoming an empress in a country where men are inferior to women. I'm breaking the tradition, and I consider myself great. This will also be the greatest political achievement I will leave in history. I will stay in the minds of future generations of women as an example. And actually, Washini's、uh, I design is a. Evidence, an evidence that women can rule a country as well. So we have this portrait of the Queen Elizabeth. What is this? A portrait of another queen. It is inspiring to know that there are female monarchs in this world who are as great as I am. The woman in this portrait is also very majestic. It is the look of a monarch of a country. Please pass on my greetings from my empress for her. Please also keep a firm grip on the power that belongs to you as you travel through time and space, and do not give it to men. Good luck, traveler. Writer. Malinke sees a writer. She is very elegant. Nice to meet you, traveler. Have you been to meet those lords out there? They have exciting stories. It would be pity not to record it for posterity. Besides, we have so much material in our court that could be used for writing. Dashing men and beautiful women. I don't know if there are any books like that in the world. You might know. I'm committed to writing such a book. A record of the flamboyance and the elegance of our capital city. Look how beautiful it is out there. Perhaps you could take away some souvenirs. So obviously. What the writer needs is the ink. Is this the writing instrument you gave me? It should be you give me. Sorry, 
What a beautiful little item. I will put it to good use. May your journey be paved with beautiful falling flowers. We'll meet. And here we go. We have uh, four items and that haven't changed still. So, the runestone uh, is a kind of amulet. So we give it to the Duke. I hope this room will guarantee the endless continuation of our dynasty. You? You are a little bit stupid if you think some druid or seer can help you. Our time, uh, our space and time is three dimensions, and what is the fourth dimension? If you were a drop of water, then you would stir up the water as you fell. If you were a star, then you would cause fluctuations when you explode. Will you find the answer inside? Be free. And the brick? The brick, it is of a cathedral. It is a symbol of belief, so we give it to the witch whose belief has collapsed. This is indeed a solid proof. Sometimes I envy those who build glorious cathedrals. At least they have their inner sanctuary. Thank you, traveler. Control. The silk will give it to the king, since it is from the Far East. What a beautiful fabric. I could make most magnificent and majestic cloak out of it. It's just the right stateliness for this cathedral. I hope you will come back to our territory. This time and place, any time. Live on. And last, we we'll give the druid the flower, cherry blossom. What a beautiful flower! Thank you, traveler. You are a traveler from the afterlife, born to suffer a triple death. The life of reincarnation is a curse, but I wish you good luck. Moisto again. Uh, there's an easter egg here, the Kana T, it is the surname Jim has given himself for the name of the channel. I hope this is correct. Um, Google translation, of course, again. So we have these eight items changed and we are done now. I have finally gathered all eight pieces. Live on, be free, escape the control. Maybe we will meet again. I can feel my power returning. Graves didn't lie to me. I touch the silver gun on my back. It is time to meet Astaroth. In a thick fog, I see the black shadow. Here's Astaroth, the demon who controls everything. We meet at last, little one. You have been on an adventure. And now you have come to make a deal with me? You want my power. What can you give me? Astaroth ignores my question and asks me a question instead. Little one, why do you put your fate in the hands of these men? The kind of men who carry pistols around with them. You should not be surprised that these two men you trust are both murderers. Malinki, listen to me. I swear on my life that I will protect you. Puppet, I love you. You're so special. Ah, and that stupid graves. These men, Malinki, all have their own motives. They all want you. Just one thing, they don't know your real name. Your name, your name is Astarte, my kin. My sister, my brother, Astarte. Perhaps you do not believe me, but indeed I'm not lying. You're me, and I'm you. To be honest, I don't identify with this identity in my heart, which still sounds bizarre. But I actually feel a twinge of excitement. This means that I really do have the same powers as a demon in front of me. So you can take my word for it now. Give me your power. You can't kill me anyway. In exchange, I'll help you save someone. Dimitri whom you love? Matthew whom you love? Oh Matthew, what an interesting creature. Dimitri would have made a good henchman for me, but unfortunately he was too stupid and blinded. That's why he lost his family. That cult had made him burn, made him do what he couldn't do before. To kill and to save. 
Mr. Rose points at me. Don't do that. Oh, I forgot to put a me here. It's actually a word from a line from Malinky. All right. So who to pick? Dimitri or Matthew? Matthew or Dimitri? I'll save both. <laughs> this decision is the same as no decisions at all. After I saw Astoros, I decided to forgive Matt for killing Dimi. The demon in front of me is the real source of darkness. Without him, Matt would be nothing more than a poor but nice miner. I decided not to wait any longer. I am a starty, and I can make changes at will. Dimi, Matt, those pieces all gather into my power. Power Astaroth cannot imagine. I draw the gun and pull the trigger. Sure enough, I feel his power weakening rapidly. What? What is this? What have you done? My kin, what have you done? So this was adapted but from the any episodes of uh, the original Malinki Saga. Actually, um, in the original episode, we, aka Malinki, has has given Astaroth a second heart, and it was the heart of Matt, one of the hearts from Matt. Astaroth panics as I feel my power growing rapidly. He screams in pain, then disappears into the fog. But he was also right. I can't kill him. A voice comes from afar. You may have destroyed my form, but my soul will always be there. Astarte, Astarte. Who cares? I'm relieved. I'm Astarte and I can now choose all the fates that concern me. Dimi or Matt? Matt or Dimi? And Paul Graves? All of them, of course. The moment I killed Astaroth, I understood the meanings of choice between life and death. I can feel everything, but I can't change the past. Such new lives require death. If I choose to sacrifice myself to the next reincarnation, the next cursed reincarnation, to experience this fate again, countless times, I can then save the people of this time and space and bring their past back into the right track. With my power comes my soul, which is in countless cycles. It is my greatest curse. How many similar choices have I gone through? I don't know. What I do know is that this time, I know what to choose. And why not? They love me and I love them. Matt likes to call me Puppet during our journeys. Demi has nicknamed me Malinky. Both not really me. I'm a substitute. But I love them. In this life, having no love in Mopa, I have love from these two people. Whether it's freaky or not. I love them. So, let me enter yet another rift in time, beginning yet another painful cycle that I don't know when it will begin. 1881, Glamorgan Wells. Pop it! I've got a new job and I can support our family. I'm really the happiest man in the world. Great, Matt. Want to go for a walk? Matt nods happily. His son can now play without worry and he takes his wife's hand and goes down to the water. Matt feels very happy. 1992, Berlin, Germany. His daughter, still young but already very active, and I suspect that I missed a line here. <laughs> anyway, we all know it's Timmy. His daughter is squeezing and waving two leaves while his wife boils water by the tent that Demi has just pitched. Dimi has just finished pitching his tent and, uh, and is a little tired. He's sitting on a slightly distant stump, reading. He seems to feel as if he has forgotten something, and can't really get into the book. Dimitri, the water will be ready soon. Yes, dear. He waves towards his family. He's happy. But there is always a lingering memory in the back of his mind which he struggles to recall. He seems to be a lively, lovely girl, but he has never seen her before. But somehow, Dimi knows very well in his heart. She has saved his family and his life. She loves him, but she's dead. Dimi takes off his glasses. He doesn't know where this lingering memory comes from. 
but he just know that it is real. He closes the book and wipes the tear from his eyes. What is her name again? In the blurred shadow of Demi's memory, the girl keeps smiling as she is telling him she's leaving. Between frustration and sadness, Demi pronounces her name, Malinki. Right. <laughs> okay. This is the whole procedure of the game.、Um, first of all, actually, the ending,、um, the e- ending of the game was basically the same with the original ending.、Uh, so Matt, he、um, he didn't show any signs of re- remembering the.、Um, Being attached to life of Astaroth or his his new puppet substitute puppet,、um, but Demi in the original episode has shown the signs of remembering us, whether he knows us or not. I prefer to set the ending as a kind of pitiful one, which he can only remember name. Without any other identities of Malinki. Anyway, it's it's finished.、Uh, go to the menu. Here it is. Ah,、uh, well, I know I'm not an expert of it. Like the a lot of functions I haven't learned, or I just. Failed to learn how to use those functions in this engine, like、uh, the animations, the、uh, shaders,、uh, sort of things like these, and the anime AI, the etc.、Uh, but I hope you like the story, and if you're interested in it, please、um, go on itch.io to download it and. If you are interested in the original series, you can、um, subscribe, Jim, through these two buttons. Yeah, and this is his、um, Billy Billy channel or his YouTube channel. Um, this is the end. Thank you for watching.